In a previous video, we saw how to connect to our remote MySQL instance by using an SSH tunnel. That was good for connecting to MySQL from my local computer to a remote MySQL running on a server somewhere. In this video, I want to show you how to make two servers communicate with each other so that an application server can communicate with a MySQL server. So we have a few concerns we have to get through to make that happen. First, we have to make sure any network security is out of the way. That's usually a firewall or, in AWS's case, some extra security rules you have to make. And then we have to make sure MySQL is listening for a remote connection instead of just local connections. And then finally, a MySQL user has to be created in order to accept connections from a remote host. So first things first, let's check out AWS. I'm using Amazon Web Servers for the two servers that I have spun up, and we can see that I have allowed communication over the private network on both TCP and UDP protocols for the servers that I've spun up here. So that just takes care of Amazon AWS security groups, which are an added network security that works on top of firewalls. So that takes care of Amazon. Next up are firewalls. I have the two servers here. On the top is a application server, and on the bottom is the MySQL server. So we saw the network security set up on Amazon, so these two servers can communicate with each other over their private networks. That is the private network IP address here, the 172.3135, which we can also see here in our host name that AWS conveniently gives us. So these servers can communicate over that network. So let's see what the IP tables rules are for the MySQL server. And we can see here that it's allowing stuff on the localhost network, it's allowing currently established and related connections, and it's allowing SSH before dropping anything else. So this is pretty restrictive. It's not going to allow traffic inbound, that's what the input chain defines. It's not going to allow inbound traffic that does not meet any of these accept rules. So MySQL traffic on port 3306 is not going to be allowed into the server from external sources. So if I do this, let's see, it's 172.31.35.183. I'll connect just as user root. Of course, I need to spell that right. All right, so this is just going to hang because the firewall rule drop silently drops the traffic. So the server trying to connect knows that it's not getting a response and doesn't know why. All right, so let's allow traffic in. So next we need to set up a rule to allow inbound traffic from this server. So I'm going to allow traffic only specifically from this IP address so that we are secure and that other servers will not be able to connect to the MySQL port remotely. So I'll do sudo IP tables. I want to insert into the input chain. I'm not going to use A to append. I'm going to use I to insert. Go to the input chain, so we'll add a rule in here. And let's see, we have one, two, three, four. I'm going to add to the fourth position. And I'm going to say on the protocol TCP, if the destination port is MySQL's 3306. And then I'm going to say if the source is this server's IP address on that, specifically on that localhost network, 172.3141248. So I only want to allow inbound connections from the server. And even if it's from the server, I want it specifically to be happening on this private network that we have set up between them. Now I'm going to say accept. Oops, I need to do J to jump to the accept target. And I think that should be good. Now we can list this out again. Great. So we allow SSH. We allow this other stuff, like the localhost network traffic. We drop everything if it doesn't meet those. But now here, we are allowing traffic from this host, which is just the server I set up there. So now if we try to log in, let's see what happens. Perfect. Now, this was able to communicate to the server, and the server responded immediately saying, you're not allowed to connect. Now, the reason for that is that MySQL is not listening on this private network. So we need to edit the MySQL conf. In this server, which happens to be Ubuntu, that's at Etsy, MySQL, my.cnf. And we can search for bind. And we can see here that bind address is looking specifically for the localhost address. 127.001. But we want this to bind to the private network. So we can either do this bind to all networks, so it can be connected to from any network interface, except the firewall rules are blocking pretty much everything except for connection from the server. So that can be a safe option. 
Or we can say listen to that network specifically. So now MySQL is going to be listening on this network for connections. So I'm just going to do that option right now. They're kind of equally as secure because we have the firewall rules in place blocking all of the traffic. This is what I would prefer to in a production instance unless I had to bind all networks for other reasons. Now that I made those changes, I need to restart my SQL. All right, great. Now let's see. I think I still should be able to connect locally, and I can. Great. All right, so now that that's changed, my SQL is actually listening on this network. We can hop over here and try to connect once again. All right, now we have a slightly different error. We are actually allowed in. My SQL is listening on that network, but the user is not allowed to connect from that host. And let's see what that means exactly. So I'll log in here. And we can say select user host from mysql.user, which is the database MySQL and table user that has all of the users here. And we can see that there's the root user and this Debian sysmain, but they can only connect locally. So this is localhost network. This is the IPv6 localhost. And this, of course, is just the host name localhost. We don't have any users that can connect remotely. So let's make one. So to make a user, I can say create user and I name the user just my app user. And now we define the host. So if I use the wildcard, or I can even put it in quotes, the wildcard, it can connect from any host, or I could say localhost, so it can only connect locally. But of course, I want it to connect from this server. So I'm going to say 172.3141.248, which is the IP address of the server. So users from the server, or specifically my app user, will be able to connect to this MySQL database. Now I want to say identified by, and we have to give it a password. I'm just going to say password here, which is a terrible password that you should not use. But since I'm just giving a demonstration here, that'll be fine. All right, now once we did that, I'm going to flush privileges since we just added a new privilege. Now over here, I'm going to try this again, except I can't connect with user root. So I'm going to do my app user, and I want a password. My password, of course, is just the terrible password password, but I can get in. Now I'm logged in. Now, of course, I don't have access to really any databases. So let's say create database my app. And I want to grant all privileges. And I'll let you Google about adding specific privileges to users instead of granting all of them, because you might not want a, a remote user to be able to drop a table, for instance. But I'm going to grant all privileges on, let's see, I just call that database my app. I want this user to have access to do something to every table in the my app database. And I'm going to grant that to user my app user, and specifically the user that's at 172.3141248. All right, great. Now here, I think I have to log back out to do that, to see that. Nope, great. I instantly have access to the my database. And I can create a table or drop this database or whatever because I granted all permissions to this user, my app user, to this database, my app. Now, since this is an application server, Technically, we would have an application, and that application would connect to this remote MySQL server. But I'm not going to show any code here. I'm just going to show you that this MySQL client on the application server up here in the top can connect to this MySQL server down here, which is on a remote server only through this private network because we have firewall rules in place, because MySQL is only listening on that network, and because the MySQL user specifically says it can be connected to through my app user from that IP address.